Okay. Got ZBrush going. There we go. Okay. So I have been meaning to go through some files I've been collecting from people around the internet. And let's see if I can find some of those. I've been doing a really bad job of keeping those organized and keeping track of those. So let me go see if I can hunt those down really quickly. Let's see, streaming. Um, we have an orc here. So Nicolic orc. Oh, you know what? This might be a Z project. Let me see if I have this one. Okay, yeah, it's a Z project. So uh, whenever you open a Z project versus a Z tool, if it's a Z tool, I can just load it up here and I can have, you know, anything open that I want. A Z project is basically going to open up however the user had it set up when they showed up. Everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go to File Open, and that's going to open a Z project here. So if I go to Streaming here, this will be the orc character uh, I was sent, as well as, I think I got another one in here. Uh, Cameron K. Smith sent me, I think, a helmet. So there's a cool little orc we can play around with a little bit. And then also, uh, this one is also another Z project. So if I go and I want to open both of these at the same time or in the same um, same session, what I'd have to do is go ahead and save this out as a Z tool. So we'll call this orc. And then also you can double click a Z project and it'll go ahead and open up in ZBrush as well. And also Z tools will do that as well. So you don't have to go to file open or load tool. You can just go save as. <clears throat> and then uh, we have this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead. And now this one, see how it has all this stuff in here? And the other one, the orc did too. It has a bunch of things in here. Uh, if you'll then shift and turn all these on. Uh, these are saving a Z project will save all of your working files here. So I'm able to go through here and kind of just check out all the things you have in here. We got the body split up and the skull and the eyeballs and all that good stuff. So in this case here, if all I'm going to be playing around with is this helmet, I'm trying to remember which one was open or is it this one? Let's go out of solo mode here. Um, this one looks like it has more stuff in it. Oh, I guess this one is I six. I guess we don't need any of this one. I'm just trying to go through all here make sure I'm hitting the right one. Although it, I guess it doesn't really matter if we're just gonna be kind of playing around. This one looks like it has some more stuff in it as well. I'm gonna guess this one's rebuilt. I'm gonna double click this one and whichever one is selected, I'm gonna assume is the one that I'll be playing with. Let's say it's this one. So just to keep this simple, let's go to save as and I'll save this under Cameron Smith helmet. Alrighty, so now if I go to preferences, initialize ZBrush. And that's, I think, whenever people do control S, it goes to file, save as, and then again, saves a Z project and it saves a bunch of stuff over here. So if you're having problems with file sizes or you don't necessarily wanna keep everything over here or your document settings or anything that comes in with a Z project, then you can simply just do a tool, save as, and it'll just save out a Z tool. Uh, and then I can load these up here. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. I'm gonna go to Matt Cap Gray here, and let's just take a quick look here. So if I'm doing like a sci-fi helmet, the first thing I'm gonna do is get all my basic shapes in there the way I'd like. And of course, you're also gonna want a head in here to dictate, so if I go into transparency mode, I'm gonna hold down shift to turn off all the eyeballs and then turn on all the eyeballs. It looks like this one's set to subtractive here, which I don't think we would want. And then uh, now you can kind of see a head just kind of in there. So that you're gonna to wanna to keep that in there for reference because sometimes if you don't, you'll end up doing a bunch of cool helmet stuff. And then next thing you know, you know you're not gonna be able to fit a head in your cool helmet because you've gone and arranged it quite a way. So you wanna keep yourself honest and uh, just allow yourself to kind of play around here. Now this one uh, looks like it's been completely rebuilt. So if I go over here to geometry and drop this down, we got subdivision level one. So I would go through and rebuild some of this stuff as needed uh, if I'm just trying to refine the shape. So this shape back here, what I could do is if I'm ready to, you know, not necessarily done concepting, but if I'm done kind of getting the shape figured out and I want something a little bit more uh, it's smooth to work with, there's a couple ways I can do that. So if I go up here to preferences, uh, edit, 
Turn off the line cursor to the surface here. So let's say I want to refine this back piece right here. Uh, one way to do that is just go in here with your refine brushes. There's H polish, trim dynamic are some of my favorite to work with here. And just go through here and you can see I have a pretty large brush here. So I'm just going to kind of polish this out a bit as I go. And then if you want to polish to a corner here, what I do is I go into my move accu. So here's move accu. It's basically just the move brush with curve, accu curve turned on. So when you do that, and I have a brush saved out for that. So when I have that, I can pull these things out to like corners here. And even on the inside, I can go through here. So instead of you know going in here and clipping or anything like that, I can just pull out the corners and then I can go in here with my H polish and then just polish this down to a box. Saves me a little bit of time because uh, if I wanted to clip this, you know, I could clip if I hold on control shift and go to clip curve, I can go to the side here and I can clip these back. Um, but sometimes it gets a little bit hairy in here if you want to uh, say like clip straight back here. So you're going to go through here and then you're going to get this kind of stuff. Um, you can go through here through the top and you can do trim and you can trim through one side and that'll go ahead and cut. Uh, slice and then you're going get to get a little bit of leftover uh, but then you're going to have to do a deformations mirror, mirror and weld to get the same on both sides. So sometimes when I'm just concepting stuff it's easier for me just to go in with H polish and ignore all the clipping and stuff especially if I'm going across symmetry and I don't have to like hide any any side and go through and clip. If I want to it's not a huge deal. All I got to do is select rectangle, um, turn off X to turn off X symmetry over here so hitting X just activates and deactivates X symmetry. So I can hide this side over here. I can go through here and clip and trim as much as I want to on one side and kind of just sharpen this up. And the reason I'm doing this is if I want to sharpen up this inside here and like say do something like this, it's just going to go blah, you know, or if I turn on X, it's even worse because it's going to clip through both sides. So what I'm doing is turning off X, getting rid of visibility on this side, going back in with my clip brush. And you can go like here to here, clip one side, and then just do a quick geometry uh, modified topology mirror and weld. And now you can clip the inside, and then you can turn X back on. Um, but in lieu of doing that, sometimes I'll just go into my H polish brush, call it a day. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Dynamesh as you go, as you're building up in your resolution and you're getting things more refined, you can just up the resolution of your Dynamesh, which is over here. Um, I, you know, a lot of people want this custom menu here. Uh, I tend to live in this custom menu because I don't like going over here and going blind. If you do want that, let me grab that for you guys so I get that every once in a while. If you go to my Gumroad page, just Google Gumroad Pavlovich. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's an intro to ZBrush files. Grab that and that'll give you that custom menu. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. We're just doing, we're just going over some files here. Uh, just basic you know, cleanup techniques and uh, concepting techniques to uh, get you up and running. Now, like before I get this thing all polished up, what I'm doing is going up with my H polish brush. And if I want to put a line through here, I'll go in sometimes with my Damien standard brush and hold down Alt and I can build up a little ridge along here. Like so, and then I can go in with my clay brush and I can build up to that ridge. And then I can go back in with my H polish brush and hold down Alt with my H polish. So you can hold down Alt and then you can let go of Alt. Holding down Alt will polish up to a surface. Letting go of Alt will polish down to a surface. Um, so between those two, and see how big my brush is? That's going to allow me to get a smoother surface. If you go in here with H polish with a tiny brush, you're going to get a lot of little warbles in your surface. So if you're just working with these big flat planes, make your H polish brush big and then just go in there with a feather touch and that'll get you a lot smoother result. So I'm just, and again, I don't really care too much about making this surface perfect because I can always go in and rebuild it really quickly. Um, so I'm just trying to delineate where I want my hard edges to be basically. Um, and then all this stuff in here I can rebuild. If I want to, you know, this thing I could just replace with a cylinder pretty easily. So what I can do is I can just clip this out or I can just go into my custom menu here, which is a cylinder. Or if you don't have a custom menu, just B, I and go into your insert primitives and then grab one of these cylinders in here. You can hit M to open up this menu or you can just go up here and cycle through here. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I like my custom menu because I, I, I can say I want a 12 cylinder, an 8 cylinder. I'm going to grab a 12 and we'll just put that right down the middle. And then we'll do under our subtool split menu over here, you can do split mass points. 
and now I can just replace this cylinder back here that's kind of concepty with a cylinder that's a little bit more refined. So I'm just going to basically match this cylinder and match that tilt with my gizmo here. And we'll just push this back so it looks like uh, it comes out a little bit and then it kind of bevels in. So all we got to do to match that is just run a bevel along this side. We're going to our Z Modeler brush BZM. And now I can just kind of bevel this in and then we'll just pull the whole thing out. And then it looks like it has a hole in here. So we can go in here to inset uh, polygroup island region and just pull this in. And if we want to push this back, all we got to do is Q mesh polygroup island or polygroup all and push this back. But if you don't want it to go straight back, sometimes I don't. What I'll do is first I'll do an inset and then I'll do a Q mesh polygroup island. And instead of just Q meshing this back, I'll hold down shift and just push it back. And that'll give me a little bit of an inset as I push that back. Uh, so now that I have that, I can go into my crease menu, geometry, crease over here. And then I can just do a crease PG, which is of course crease Paul Gabri or crease poly group. And then we can crease that up. And then back here, you're gonna see this isn't creased. So if I hit D, always yes, it's gonna give me my dynamic subdivisions. So if we go up here to dynamic, they're gonna say D and shift D toggles that on and off. So D toggles it on, shift D toggles it off. And now we're getting um, some of my crease action here. Uh, so if it's not creased, it tends to average, it won't tend to, it will absolutely average your vertices back here. Um, so you're gonna have to compensate for that. There's a couple different ways. You can go in here with your Z modeler brush, you can insert a single edge loop. So if I hit D and then start adding in edge loops here, you can see we can start tightening up that transition. Or we can use creasing. One way to crease is to go over here and do uh, crease, flat island outer targets and now it'll go ahead and crease this whole flat area back here and now when i hit d it'll be nice and flat um, if you also want to uh, let's see control d, uh, you can also hover over the space go to polygroup flat island and polygroup that and then you can do another crease pg um, you can hover over this edge here you can go to crease edge loop complete and crease it or you can go into crease drag your crease tolerance down and hit crease and then let's go ahead and do that and that'll crease because this angle is greater than 54. So it's like a 90 degree angle. So I'll go ahead and crease all those. Any number of ways to do this. So long story short, you now have creases where you want them. Uh, and you refine that back area here. So one thing I also like to do is over here under crease and then under uh, your dynamic subdivisions here. So you can preview how many subdivisions you want. See how it's kind of faceted? I'm going to take the smooth sub D and just crank that up a bit. And you're going to say, okay, now it's not faceted, but man, these creases are out of control. They're razor sharp. Doesn't look very realistic. Um, so what I'm going to do is go down here to my crease level. You see smooth subdivision level is set to four. So what that means is it's subdividing one, two, three, four. If I hit apply, you're going to say I have actual subdivision levels here. I don't, that's the last resort. I don't want to have real subdivision levels because it's going to severely limit what I could do to this object. Anything with subdivision levels, uh, if you want to put a curve on here, an insert mesh brush or anything like that, or go through back with Z modeler and be like, oh, you know what? I want to put a ring in here. Um, you're not going to be able to do that unless you delete lower or go back down and delete higher, all that stuff. So just stay in dynamic subdivisions until you absolutely have to. Um, so D, shift D. It's all just fake. It's just preview. Uh, so when, when I have a preview here, then I can go through here and I can still do like insert multiple edge loops. I can put in some multiple edge loops here and then we can do like Q mesh polygroup all and we can still start still making changes here. Now you're going to see I have green on all these polygroups. When I do polygroup all, it's going to do all those polygroups. So it, in order to avoid that, what I can sometimes do is do island and that'll just do this one island. And then if I want to match this one, just tap it and that'll inherit that same value that I did with QMesh. Um, or what I can do is just go to the side here, hold down control shift, select lasso, grab this end piece here, hit control W, which is group mass clear mass. That looks almost the same. Let's keep hitting W until you get something re uh, different. And then, oh my gosh, they are different polygroups. They just look exactly the same. I'm trying to get you something that stands out. There we go. And then I can switch this one back to QMesh, polygroup ball, in or out. Um, but if we do that, you're going to see again, these things are razor sharp. So where I want to, what I want to do is kind of avoid that. And if you want to get rid of these, just go to insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and we can just kill these things here. If you want to make this wider, Q mesh polygroup all. And just like we did for this polygroup where we just held down um, shift to push along that surface normal, you can also push it along this surface normal as well, just holding down shift. Um, 
So we got that and we have our razor sharp creasing edges. So I'm going to go over here. So when we hit apply, it gave us subdivision levels one, two, three, four, five. That's where the smooth subdivision levels comes in. We're previewing what it would look like if we subdivided this. Um, if we have a smooth subdivision level of four and our crease level is set to three, what that's going to do is subdivide one, two, three, uncrease everything, and then subdivide however many we have left, which is four. So it's going to subdivide three with creases, and then it's going to turn them off, and then smooth subdivide one more time. So if I do shift D and then D to preview that, you're going to see these edges get a little bit of a little softness there. Um, if it's a little, so these ones here, since these edges are closer together, you're not going to get as extreme a fall off through here as you are where the edges are really far apart. Um, if you don't want that, just simply insert a single edge loop here and here, and that'll just, it's like putting in a control loop so that it does get a little bit of a sharper fall off here. And then uh, if you want to make that even more obvious, you can do a crease level of like one and then a smooth subdivision of four. So it's going to crease only one subdivision and then continue to crease up. Of course, if we match these four to four, it's going to be razor sharp again. So just kind of dial these in as needed. Three is pretty good. So I know that was a lot of talking, but just to do this, but we went over a lot of stuff too. So uh, we got this and then we've got our concept sitting here still. So it's like, you know what? I've already replaced all this. So I don't need this anymore. I can go in here with my clay brush and just to kind of knock this back underneath my refined mesh where I can go in here and like control shift, select lasso and just pull this out here. Invert that, get rid of this one here. So now that those are done, we can go ahead and do delete hidden. Now this one, if I close holes, it's going to do some kind of squirrely stuff here. And it's also not going to be mirror and weld. The close holds is not a mirrorable operation. So I'm going to go back here and do a quick mirror and weld. Uh, to kind of clip this back, what I can do is, again, if I go through here with my clip brushes, it's going to want to clip all the way through. And you hold down Alt, it'll clip through. It's also going to clip through the front. So what you can do is, you see how I have select clip circle here? If I do Control Shift and then tap Control, that'll give me visibility. Then I can hold down Alt, and then I still have clip circle available to me. So you can go through here and you can use your clip brushes. Make sure that little cross doesn't cross over your mesh when you hold down Alt so it clips through. Um, if it crosses over and you hold down Alt, it's going to clip out. That's a feature. Sometimes I use that to kind of put in recessed screw ports and stuff like that. Um, but if you hold down Alt with the cross, uh, that'll kind of clip through here. Uh, another thing you can do is you can just, let's take, let's go to solely mode here. I'm going to take this uh, cylinder here. I'm going to duplicate it off. And in order to work on this piece and my duplicated cylinder, I'm just going to shoot them to the top of my stack. I don't want to dig for them in here. I'm going to hold down shift, bent up arrow, tap, tap the helmet, shift, bent up arrow, hold down shift, turn everything off, tap the nameplate, turn it on, turn this one on. And now I'm just working on these two pieces here. Uh, I'm going to hold down control shift to bring everything back. And then for this one here, what I can do is I can just scale this up and kind of push this out. And since this is, I can do a live Boolean or a Dynamesh. Since I'm working in Dynamesh and I'm just concepting, I'm not going to bother live Booleaning this, but you can. And I'm going to turn this one to a subtractive mesh. This one's positive. If I go to Subtool Merge Down, and I'll merge those together, and then I can Dynamesh those out. Um, oh, it looked like as I was doing H Polish, it was going through the mesh. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but before I do that, what I should have done is hold down Control Shift. I'm going to isolate this one. I'm going to split hidden. I'm going to hit D for dynamic subdivisions. We'll crank that up to like four. And then I'm going to hit apply. The reason I'm doing that is because if I don't hit apply and I merge these down, it's going to keep this as uh, not, it's going to keep it faceted. It's just, again, it's just a preview. So before I do this one as well, I'm going to go into solo mode here. And this is something I should have brought up and talked about and actually done. If I go into my H polish brush, you're going to see under auto masking, back face masking is off. So we've got this thin mesh here and I'm over here like, or even in like clay tubes is another one. If I'm over here doing a lot of concepty stuff and then I go to the back, it's pushing all, pulling all the way through my mesh. If I want to be careful, I'm not doing that. Just turn on back face masking and that will go ahead and pull through and all that good stuff here. Same for H polish. So if I bring in, go in here, I can go back. Oops. Turn on back face masking, and now I can just pull these surfaces back out. And I'm just basically pulling those polygons away from where I was um, putting those in there. So now if I control drag, that'll be nice and smooth. So then I go out of solo mode. This one's subtractive again. Now if you don't do that, if you just you know do an insert mesh or you just merge these down, then you forget to make this subtractive. It's not a big deal. Just isolate this one here, 
and go into your polygroup here and do group as Dynamesh sub. And all that is is just down here under your polygroup menu, group as Dynamesh sub. Uh, so now if I hold down control shift, bring everything back and then control drag, that'll go ahead and make that a subtractive mesh and just clip through. And then we can bring everything back. Just hold down shift and turn the eyeball on and off. Whew. Everybody get all that? Uh, to use clay polish for hard surface cleanups, I do. And you can also, while you're dynameshing, go over here to geometry, dynamesh, and you can actually turn on polish over here as well. So as you're dynameshing, it's going to go ahead and polish for you. Um, I'm kind of a, a, a uh, control freak when it comes to exactly how and where I want my stuff polished. So uh, I don't I don't use it much, I'll be honest. Um, I do clay polish a little bit for... Uh, if I bring in something from Fusion 360 or another external program and I need to Dynamesh something, I'll use clay polish to kind of Dynamesh and clay polish things. But, um, but your, I mean, your mileage may vary. Uh, you know, you can always have polish on. So while you're um, concepting through here, you can just Dynamesh this and it's already kind of polishing your surface. And then you can go back through here with H polish and uh, polish this up. So thanks for bringing that up. I, I don't do it very often, but it is super useful. And it's not necessarily, I don't do it often because it's not a good idea. I don't do it often because I have, it's probably an unnatural fear of losing control of my surfaces. So, and I really, you don't need that much control. Uh, but another thing you can do, if you want to kind of clean this up a little bit, uh, let's try, let's just try this. Group by normal. Yeah, it's not going to do it, but we can manually go through. So we got an interior polygroup at least. One thing you can try and do is if you go over here, hold on control and go into mask pin, and then we can start masking out these uh, surfaces here. Because let's say we want to do a quick uh, polished polygroup border on these complex surfaces. Um, to do that, I have a mask inner and mask outer. So Joseph Dress talked about this a while back. Uh, we can go through it manually. So if I have mask pin here, and I have a depth mask on my mask pin, you're going to see it doesn't really respect my edges. Uh, if you hold down control, and turn on depth mask and you bring this bottom one up not all the way to zero but pretty close so it's a small number now when you go through here and mask it'll go ahead and respect your edges so you can just quickly go through here and mask these areas um, now this is if you wanted to do you didn't want to rebuild your surface you just want to kind of clean it up a little bit you can go through here and make these surfaces um, just hit control w and now this will be a polygroup here and then these are already polygroup from when i did it last time now, if you're doing holding down control and you're masking and you don't want to go over that edge and it's not respecting your edge enough, let's go here to auto masking, turn on mask by polygroups, and now you can just mask wherever there's not a polygroup already. And you can just kind of quickly do that. So wherever you start masking is where it's going to mask and it's not going to cross over that line. So just hit control W and then continue to mask this area out. And what I'm doing, control W, I'm going to go over here to my polygroups. You're going to see there's a bunch of little stuff in here. Go to polygroups, merge stray groups. Uh, uh, uh. There you go. And that'll get rid of kind of some of those little uh, ones that are kind of hanging out. And another thing I'm going to do is now that I got these polygroups all laid out here, I can go through here to deformation, polish by features. And you're going to see if I have closed circle and I polish these surfaces, it'll polish my surfaces and it'll also maintain my forms pretty good. Um, if I don't care about my forms that much and I just want to polish the hell out of this thing, what I can do is turn on open circle and that'll really polish my surfaces, but it's also going to kind of um, make these things kind of dip in. If I want to avoid that, I need to put a, oops, let's go forward one. I need to put a poly group through here. Easy way to do that is just to isolate this, go to the side, Go to slice curve and we'll put a polygroup here and we'll put a polygroup here. Actually, let's make this, yeah. So now that we got polygroups there and we go to polish by features, now it's going to polish my surfaces and keep those nice and crispy. Uh, again, we can go in here with our move accu and just pull this down here. And we still have mass by polygroups at 100. Turn that back down to zero and now we can just kind of pull these things down to a little bit of a sharper corner here. Continue to use your polish by features. Um, and if you just tap it, it'll just do a very slight polish here. So now we've kind of got that look going. And you just go in here with your move brush and kind of pull these surfaces out. Now again, this is if we were just sculpting and concepting our stuff. If we wanted uh, even more control over these surfaces, all we would need to do 
is uh, rebuild this. Now, because we have polygroups in here that are kind of nice, one thing you can try and do is go through here with your Z remesher. So if I want new topology, it's a little bit cleaner. Go to Z remesher, keep groups. Let's keep smooth groups down to zero and target polygon count of five is probably fine. We're at 15 point, thousand points right now. Um, adaptive size, if you want them all perfect squares, you can crank it down to zero. Uh, if you want to build in a lot of extra loops around here, you can crank it up. Uh, I'll turn it down pretty low and then hit zero mesher. Make sure you have X turned on so it zero meshes in symmetry here. And then if that's too much, just go to half and just keep zero meshing down until you get that simplified geometry you're looking for. This looks about right, and this is workable here. You can do a little bit of cleanup if you want to. You can go through here, use the model brush, and like collapse this edge down, like so. And now um, you're kind of good to go. If you want to have a little bit more fun with this, uh, you can go through here and do like you can hover over an edge, and you can do like poly group, poly loop, and then tap Alt to get new poly groups, and then Q mesh poly group all. You can push this in. Um, of course, it's going around here, so if you want to isolate this, you'll have to, you know pull that out. But you can also go through here and you can do like bevel, edge loop complete, and you can put in bevels as you want to. Or you can even control that if you go over here to, if you hit D, that's your dynamic subdivision here. Let's do crease PG again. That's under your geometry crease menu. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. And now it's like, okay, it's getting those good creases, but now it's razor sharp. Let's see what's going on down here. We have to manually clean this up here. Yeah, so there's a little bit of crappy stuff going on here. So what I can do is I can just manually go through here and we'll just collapse these edges here, here, and we'll move this in. Now if I want to make these all the same poly group here, all I need to do is start paint, paint, hold down Alt and Paint and let go of Alt and then hit Shift and then I can just paint these poly groups together. I'm going to do a quick uncrease all and then crease PG and now those are all creased up. If I want to even, I can go through here and zero mesh this to clean this up a little bit. And I'll just do a zero mesh, uh, same keep groups. There we go. And that'll kind of clean up uh, that geometry just a tiny bit. Uh, so back to creasing here, if I hit D, we're getting a very soft crease, which isn't a bad look, but if you do, you can go in here to crease poly groups and just sharpen up those edges and then go here to get a little bit more control. Dynamesh, nope, nope, nope. We want to do dynamic increase level so like say crease level of two smooth subdiv of three and that'll just kind of back those creases off now if these are too creased you can go in here and go you know what uh, i don't need insert single edge if i can get rid of the, these ones here and kind of start simplifying this geometry now because all of these things are interconnected you you're going to have to watch and make sure that you know you're not getting any undesired results uh, through here it's getting a little bit crazy so i'm just going to go through here and manually collapse some of these edges down here. Something like this. Uh, so now when I hit D, you know, they're still nice and creased and stuff, um, but you can get rid of some of that uh, fidelity in there. So you can kind of just back off these shapes here. If we go to insert single edge loop, you can kind of start simplifying some of this geo in through here. But it's kind of up to you. You don't have to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that geometry as it was. Uh, but now if we hit D, you're going to see as we're backing those control loops off, now we're getting a softer result. So now we're going to have to go up here to like smooth sub D of four, crease level of three maybe, and then dial those shapes back in just to get those shapes. Um, alternatively, you could also use Z spheres to quickly just rebuild this shape. And then you got even more control. Uh, but the cool thing about this is if you do want to go back through here, with your Z modeler brush, you're able to go and insert loops and go through and pull uh, these shapes through and all that good stuff. Um, cool, awesome. Thanks for oh yeah, and there's more stuff on the Gumroad. Thanks for bringing that up, Siegel. If you guys want to grab just the free stuff or the cube, my cube brush page has the same stuff. Um, and you tell me why extrude edge doesn't work like my art of the 3D programs, like extruding edge to create a new face. So. The reason why is because you can very quickly create non-manifold geometry using just extrude edge willy-nilly. So if I wanted to like extrude this edge, uh, and ZBrush doesn't, you also can't create n-gons through here while you're us using the Z modeler brush. You can while you're using Z um, Z spheres, but then it converts it to actual usable geometry. So ZBrush tries very hard to keep you away from using a geometry that's going to not play nice. Um, Basically, non-manifold geometry is where if we wanted to extrude this edge here, 
let's say we did, let's see, I don't even know if I can do it in here. If we do an extrude, see, edge, extrude edge here. Um, in a normal, normal, um, in something like Maya, if you did an extrude edge, it would just pull this edge right off the surface. And if I do this in ZBrush, and it's not terribly hard, all you gotta do is just go over here and just say like, okay, delete a single poly. So if we wanted to do that here, uh, we could do it and it would basically just go here and bridge edges so we just close this off so you could do that in maya pretty easily just pull out an edge uh, but this is really bad geometry this is going to create a t junction in here um, so when you try and you know do things with that geometry it's going to behave a little bit erratically uh, also looks like we have double turned on so you're going to see if you go down here to display properties if we see both sides of a single-sided mesh that usually means doubles turned on so you can turn that off and now you can it'll disappear so in order to keep you away from creating non-manifold geometry what zbrush is doing is making it so that you can't just extrude an edge now that doesn't mean you can't do a lot of cool edge related activities for example if i wanted to um you know do extrusions all i would do is let's go over here to a plain 3D, go into edit mode, make polymesh 3D. And let's go ahead and simplify this down. I'm gonna hit reconstruct a couple times, delete higher. So if I wanted to like extrude these edges out into a ring and then keep extruding edges, all you need to do is just give it a little bit of thickness. And let's go ahead and flip. And I mean, you can Q mesh out this way so you don't have to flip. Now, uh, if you did need to flip, if you pulled back through, then all you need to do is go down here to display properties flip. Uh, and now at this point you could go here, Q mesh, polygroup ball, and then you can just extrude these edges out. Uh, if you want to go like tilt these up, you can control alt and then you can like tilt this up and then you can extrude these edges out here. If you want to go to Q mesh flat Island, you can just start extruding those edges out. Now there is thickness, but of course you can, um, you can get rid of that thickness later if you want to, and you can just bend this down. So now you're extruding edges uh, in a way that's not creating possibly non-manifold geometry. Um, like, so if you want to, yeah, if you want to get rid of those uh, bottom faces here, we can just do a quick group by normals, and that'll just group this top piece here, and then we just delete hidden. And now you've got a flat plane that you can then go back in and Q-mesh and do whatever you want to to it. So long story short, it's the keep non-manifold geometry from happening in ZBrush and getting unpredictable results with your geo. Um, here's if I let's see a ZBrush concept to a Blender or Maya final in-game model tutorial sometime. Uh, I do have that on my Gumroad if you want to go check out the Reptile Creature series. Uh, it's not hard surface, but it's all in there. And we go through a bunch of different programs for that one. Uh, and if you just want the game res portion, just go to part two. There's two parts. There's the ZBrush concepting part, and then there's the, you can get that for 20 bucks, I think, and then the Maya to Octane or um, Marmoset or Painter. Go in, we go into Painter and texture it up. That's part two, and you can grab that for 20 bucks. Or if you want them both, it's 40, and then you get a little bit of a bonus in there as well. Up to you. Or don't get it. I'm not, I'm not here to sell my stuff, believe it or not. So... There's a lot of tutorials out there as well. Uh, hard surface stuff I'm trying to, I have the making of, I need to just sit down and do it. I have, if you go to my art station page here, I do have my profile, the making of this guy. He's recorded. I just need to sit down and edit it all together. So I will have like, oh, it's, and he's a good mix of like organic and hard surface and insert mesh brushes and, you know, a little goopy stuff. And he's all textured up as well. So all I need to do is sit down. I even have a little walkthrough of what I did in Painter to texture him up. If you want to go look at him on Sketchfab, go to my Sketchfab page and you can load him up and you can tumble around him. Um, I need to sit down and just edit this all together and make it nice and presentable. And then, you know, we'll have a, a cool little... I don't know if it's cool or not, but so you can go through here and you can kind of just tumble around and kind of check him out and look at his wireframes. He's a pretty heavy model, I think. Altogether, he's about 150,000 polys. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about my poly count, um, but I did this for painter, substance painter days. Painter days? Substance days. <laughs> um, first annual substance days, they invited me to teach a couple master classes, so we went through um, and textured this guy up a little bit in one of the classes, and uh, he's fun. 
and I think it runs real time. Let me see, how do I use this? It's been a while since I've been in here. Um, I also have on my YouTube channel how to take your stuff from ZBrush to Painter to Sketchfab all in one fell swoop. Um, I basically put a bunch of robots on um, Sketchfab here. So here's like where we go in and just like paint in. Let's see, you get a, it's bumped out and there's little splatters in here. I think I took got these paint splatters from the download section on ZBrush a while back. Uh, they just had like some paint splatter alphas on there. Uh, we have this back here where he keeps his ammo and that's all, all of this stuff in here is all in Painter. All these stitches were done in Painter. You can do that kind of thing in ZBrush, um, but to keep it a little bit more control, what I like to do is do, and you can you know, lay out your UV so you can do a nice uh, flat uh, ridges along here. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's his ammo feed. And you know what I didn't make? I didn't make the ammo feed here. So you're going to see down here, well, in the 3D model, there's uh, bullets that go from this uh, exit over here to the entrance of the gun, which is right here. Uh, I, I left that out. I didn't I didn't figure that part out in time enough for uh, Substance Days. Um, he's got his little gun here. He's got, oh, the boots. So these boots, I have a boot tutorial on YouTube that'll walk you through. If you go to my YouTube channel or my Gumroad, you can download the videos for free there. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel playlists, there's a boot tutorial and you can just walk through and make these boots if you're so inclined. Um, but yeah, so this is a fun one. So I've got it all recorded. I just need to sit down and do the actual step-by-step -step stuff with you guys. We'll see how that goes. Um, cool. Yeah, and it, you know, extruding edges is useful for me on a flat plane. It's not so useful for me on here because I rarely would extrude an edge off of say a shape like this. Um, you know, but again, your mileage may vary. And if we hit D, we got this thing constanted out. Now at this point, what I can do is I can just go ahead and say smooth subdivs up to five and go, you know what? I have a smoother surface here, but I want to keep playing with, uh, you know, kind of just sculpting this thing out. So what I'm going to do is hit apply. And then immediately I'm going to go into my Dynamesh over here. Let me just Dynamesh this thing. And uh, that'll go ahead and keep our smooth surfaces here. Uh, but it also is pretty low. So I'm going to crank up my Dynamesh Resolution. And I'm also going to go over here and turn off my polish here. So Dynamesh, turn off polish, crank up that resolution a bit. Let's see what scale we got six here. Let's crank that way up. Because I'm trying to maintain that nice smooth surface, um, but also have it as a Dynamesh. There we go. So now at this point, you know, it's a smoother surface. I don't need this concepty piece anymore. This is just kind of placeholder here. So I can go ahead and just delete that out of my subtools here. So now that I've got that refined, I can go through here, have a little bit more fun. I can still go in here with like my move brush and my H polish if I want to continue to just refine these surfaces a bit. Um, I can also go into my alpha brushes here. So back in the old days in ZBrush 4R7, which is like so last month, uh, all you need, all I would, ha I would have to do, like standard brush, let's say, let's go ahead and clone this off, and then I would go in here to drag rect and bring in an alpha, like say this alpha here. Then I can hold down Alt, and we got to make a focal shift down to negative 100, crank our Z intensity up a little bit, and we can start pulling in like hard surface shapes. Um, but if I want to change this to another alpha, I've got to go select another alpha through here. Um, let's say this arrow alpha here, or something like that. Now, I do have alphas that I got from Gumroad. I think it's like 3D textures or something dot, uh, on the gum road here. So I have some hard surface alphas. Uh, now the problem with these, it's not a problem, but one of the things with these, if I go over here, like say vents and it's like, oh, there's a cool one. Let me try uh, this shape here, like this shape here. I can double click it, it'll throw it in my alphas. And now I can go through here and like grab some of these shapes here. I think I start having fun. Uh, you know, again, crank up my Z intensity if I, as needed. Now the problem with this, or the reason why this isn't so usable is if I want to swap that alpha out, I got to go into comma key here and go like, well, uh, do I want to do this one here? So we can double click this one. And then you can, you know, now you can use this one. Uh, but what's even better is if you hit B and go up here to like say chisel rect, you're going to see we have a bunch of uh, geometry in here uh, that's being converted to alphas on the fly. So if I want to drag out this one, I can drag it out. Let's change our Z intensity down. So I can drag, drag it out on this one, change it to this one, drag it on this one, change it to this one, drag it out this one, or hold down Alt. And now you can quickly go through many, many alphas very quickly. You're going to hit M 
and you can select your alphas through here. So you can grab this one and just drag this one out. Um, in order to do that with my hard surface brushes, what I did was convert uh, those alphas to geometry and then that geometry to a subtool list. And then that subtool list, if you go over here to brush, you're going to see, uh, you can go to create. And now you can do, when you do um, create in multi-alpha brush, whatever you have in your subtools and however they're oriented, it'll create a multi-alpha brush just like this one. So what I did was I converted all of these alphas to geometry using alpha, uh, make 3D. You can do create and or you can do two mesh. I like a little bit more control, so I just did create, um, or sorry, make 3D. And then we did a resolution of, I think, 256. Turn off double-sided, hit uh, make 3D. It'll put the alpha out here. So just to demonstrate that, if we just double-click this one here, go to alpha, and we say double-sided off, res 256. Let's go ahead and just make sure we have like nothing selected. So switch that out. And then make 3D here. And then drag this out. Uh, oh, we gotta have the alpha selected. So select the alpha and then make 3D. There you go. And that's the alpha it's gonna create. Um, you can grab this alpha now and you can do make 3D. That'll go ahead and make this alpha. And now that we have those two, we can go to subtool, append, so these two alphas that I've created, and now I got, all I have to do is go to create under the brush menu, create multi-alpha brush. Uh, and now I've got these two that I can pick from. So see, as I click on these, it's gonna cycle through those alphas. So I've already done that. So I can go to brush here. I think I have a hard surface, yeah. So now if I go to vents, I got those all loaded up into one brush. So now I can just very quickly cycle through all these alphas all at once. So if we go back to our concept here, we can kind of play around with these shapes a little bit. And I can also, I usually end up hitting M. I don't like scrolling through here too much, especially if it gets a little bit too busy. Uh, so I can just quickly go through here and just start putting these things in. Let's go ahead and do the intensity down. So we can start playing with like how these things are going to interact. Now you're going to, are going to be careful. You are, you do have double L back face masking not turned on, which if you want to go close to the edge and start deforming these edges, you do want to leave back face masking off. Um, if you do want it to not pull through, you're going to leave it on and now it won't pull through your object here. So use these to kind of break up your forms maybe, or you can go in here and mask and inflate. It doesn't really matter. However you want to work. I'm not going to tell you how to work. Uh, but this is just an easy way to kind of start breaking up your surfaces and kind of get some interesting stuff going. And through here, uh, let's see, let's try maybe this one here. I'll, I'll tap this one. I can put some thinned in here or I can embed, embed those a little bit maybe. So you can kind of quickly start developing a look using a combination of Dynamesh and alphas. And then of course you can rebuild this later if you want to. Uh, make your own alphas with your own meshes, all that good stuff. Um, uh, da, da, da. I already have Quixel. I assumed it was a cheaper student option. Uh, I think Substance Painter is pretty cheap. Uh, but if you already have Quixel, then <coughs> use Quixel. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, if using Photoshop tools, I hate Photoshop, like with a passion. I like Photoshop for like drawing stuff, um, but for texturing, ugh. Um, but now that's that's because I'm biased because. I like doing, um, you know, Quixel does have the procedural stuff and then you can quickly go in there and just start using, you know, Photoshop's text tools are pretty cool and you can go through there. But um, it just seems to add a lot of overhead to my texturing process that I'm not a big fan of. Um, but again, I think that's all that is, it's just my biases. So don't let me dissuade you from using Photoshop for your texturing stuff. And we go through here, we can kind of inflate this back area up here and then smooth it back out. And again, I can always rebuild. It what didn't take us that long. I know it took us a long time because I sat there blabbing my mouth about all the different techniques you can do to do this. Um, but don't let, you know, resurfacing an object or rebuilding an object dissuade you from going in here and, you know, trying out new things on your concept or putting in new shapes and having a little little bit of fun with your meshes here, because uh, you can still go through here and do an awful lot of stuff, even with it when it's in a Dynamesh form. Now, the reason you might want to Z model this is it's a little bit easier to go through here. And if you have a lower resolution envelope to just pull these little meshes in here and get a smoother result quicker and less destructively. Um, but again, again, it's not that hard to rebuild your surfaces or go in here with your H polish brush and just kind of do a little bit of cleanup here. So. 
and then you can rebuild it later. Not a big deal. There's a dynamesh as we go up. So we're just kind of fitting these things together. Um, let's say, you know what, I want to kind of have this kind of be this kind of shape through here. Now when I'm clipping these things back, sometimes you get these little spider web edges. Um, trim might be the better option, but even trim on these curved surfaces can sometimes not play too nicely. So I'm just going to go through here and smooth that just a bit and dynamesh as I go. And then we can just pull these back down through here. Again, I would, if I wanted to make this crystal clean, crystal clean, <laughs> crystal clear, uh, super clean, I would go back in and just probably zero mesh rebuild this stuff, increase, and then have a nice sub D surface or use zero mesh, I suppose. But anyway, this would be my cleanup process, my alpha process for, you know, bringing in and kind of changing these shapes here. Um, if I wanted to, I could even apply this and just go ahead and dynamesh all this here. And now this is where I could go through. Also, another cool thing, if I hit control W to make it all one poly group here. Uh, so in Zebras 4R7, if I was to go through here and like slice this thing up and then turn groups on and then dynamesh this thing, uh, you would have uh, these, these faces here would have their own groups. Let's go ahead and raise this resolution up just a bit. Um, and the reason why that could wreak havoc is because if you have groups turned on, um, you know, you would have polygroups in there. And then if you dynamesh this again with groups on, it would uh, create quite uh, a hassle for you. But now what you can do is you can go through here and you can start clipping these pieces out. So if I want to just like poke a hole through his head here or start um, splitting this thing up, all I need to do is do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. And then I've got these different pieces. I've got groups turned on so I can continue to do this. And now I can isolate this one. We're going to hit W, control tap this one. We can pull this thing out or through or back, or we can inflate it up, or we can um, kind of curve this thing around, or you can use your deformers, you can use your move brush, and you can start playing around with, you know, how these uh, plates kind of interact with each other. So it's just a very easy way to start slicing your mesh up. Even though it's concepty and in DynaMesh, uh, you can do that very quickly. Uh, you can also use panel groups or panel loops. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. A lot of different things. And if you want to work on these things separately, um, you can go like bend this around if you want to. You can quickly just go over here to split mass points and now it's a separate sub tool here. Uh, if you want to group all these together again, just turn off groups and then just dynamesh this all together. And now you're back to where you kind of started. Uh, depending on the resolution you're working at, if you're working at a high resolution, you won't have to do any cleanup, but since we're working at kind of low resolution, you might have to go smooth out those seams a little bit. And now this one here, uh, we can just, again, we're just kind of playing around with this. Let's go ahead and inflate the heck out of that thing, smooth it down. And now we can go through here and maybe go in with our trim dynamic brush and just kind of trim this into a shape here. And we'll go ahead and pull this back. And we'll kind of maybe pull this forward through here. Go in with our H polish brush. And we're just kind of, you know, again, just playing around with shapes, going to solo mode here. Use a big old H polish brush down here. And then you can go through here and like clip this side out here. And alt. so you're alt tapping twice. Um, so if you hold down control shift, bring out your clip, alt tap twice to get a sharp corner, alt tap once to get a curved corner, alt tap twice again. And now you can start cutting these things in. Uh, again, go back in with your alpha brushes and maybe try just a few interesting shapes in here. You can go right down the middle if you want to. Go to the side here. We can like maybe clip this back. Put a couple screw pores in here. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I'll just go in with my clay brush, and I'll just do like just drop a couple ports in here. Uh, but of course, you can go in here with your drag dot, bring in a sharper alpha, crank that intensity up, and you can just use that really quickly. Uh, also, you'll probably want to change your focal shift down. And these are the kind of brushes you would just want to have copies of, so you don't have to recreate these brushes, even though it only took me a couple seconds. Um, you know. Why recreate brushes when you can just go in there? Uh, if we want to make these exactly consistent, what we can do is we can drag out a copy, control drag out a copy here, or um, you can go through here and as you're dragging this out, hold, hit control and that'll make it your brush size. So bring your brush size down and now when you tap control, it'll go ahead and make those the same size. We'll isolate this, go ahead and split hidden. And now I can hit D on these ones, dynamic subdivisions, and now we've got 
weird little thing. Um, let's see. So, uh, and substance is free for students. There you go. Uh, how do you motivate yourself when you're not in the mood for sculpting? Um, when I am I in the mood for sculpting? I kind of am in the mood for sculpting, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> And motivation's a weird thing too. Sometimes I'm motivated by um, comp uh, my competitive nature, so I can go and motivate myself by going on places where, like Art Station, and kind of seeing. Um, every time I go on Art Station, I mean, but that, I mean that might not work for you. It might be a thing where, I mean, there's some days where I go on Art Station. I'm like, wow, why am I even in this industry? I'm probably the worst 3D artist in the world compared to these people. So, you know, but uh, really what it boils down to, I think, is that motivation is severely overrated. Um, and just like when you go into work at your job, I mean, I've worked some some crap jobs in my life and I, i'm not saying like oh if you work at these jobs you're a crappy person i'm just saying you know when i was in school and stuff and i wasn't a working 3d professional uh, i worked at fast food restaurants i worked at gas stations and you know you you don't need to be motivated to work at a grocery store for example uh in fact that's about as demotivational as it gets for me uh, especially customer service in general. Um, man, if you ever, ever really want to hate uh, the entirety of the human race, go work at a grocery store because everybody is really dumb. Like everybody in the world is just just painfully stupid. Um, and it's not true, but it does seem true when you're dealing with a lot of customers in, a in the course of a day. But, uh, of course, you're not motivated to go work at a grocery store. You're not motivated to go and teach people, every third person, how to swipe their debit card. Um but it's not motivation to get you through it. It's uh, discipline. It's the discipline to wake up every morning. It's a discipline to sit down at your computer. It's a discipline to start gathering reference. It's a discipline to start sculpting. Um, what I found for me, what motivates me, and it's, I think motivation is probably the wrong word, what gets me sculpting is sitting down and doing it. Even if I'm not motivated, even if I'm like, I don't know what I'm making, like, I don't have any good ideas, I'm a crap artist. Just sitting down, gathering reference, uh, going through or starting out with a sculpting exercise where I'm just like, you know what, we'll start out with um, the sphere and then we'll hit X to go across X symmetry here and then we'll make this a poly mesh 3D and I'll, of course I'll just turn on Dynamesh here and we're, we're off to the races. I'm going to grab my clip brush, my favorite, and now we're just making stuff, right? Um, it's not so much motivation, it's the discipline to sit down and sit down, sitting down at your computer and turning the program on is... 99% of it. The rest of it will follow. Uh, so if you, you have the discipline to just turn on your computer and sit down and start working, you're golden. Um, if you don't have the discipline, if you're sitting there and you're like, oh, you know what, I can't, I don't even want to sit down at the computer, that, and then you're not going to get much done. Uh, and all the motivation in the world or waiting for all the motivation in the world isn't going to help you. Um, but it's just a little bit of discipline to sit down and do it. I think you're pretty much, you, you've won already. Because as soon as I am I'm in ZBrush and I've just got this little shape here, already I'm going to start resolving this thing. Already I'm going to start thinking about like, oh, what could this thing be? And uh, what do I want to, you know, get out of this this piece here? And, uh, you know, just kind of exploring. And, you know, it's kind of like doing warm-up exercises in figure drawing class where you start doing your gestures. Uh, same thing in here. If you want to go in here and do like, oh, yeah, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's append a... Z sphere here, and of course with the Z spheres, and we're working at the native resolution. Um, I can hit X to go across X symmetry here. We can scale this down, and now let's go down here to Z sketch. Z sketch is kind of another fun one if you want to just start uh, playing around with, um, you know, just kind of getting some shapes, some shapes going here. But anyway, long story short, uh, just sitting down and doing it, I think, is going to be far more useful to you in the long run than trying to find motivation. Um, now, that's not to say, you know, you can't go and find motivation on ArtStation or if you're, like, looking for to make a specific thing. Um, there's a lot of different places. ZBrush Central, um, all that stuff will motivate you to work on something in particular, maybe, for me at least. Uh, but the motivation to work, period, 
uh, is really more discipline oriented than it is any sort of motivation because you know it can be fickle as well like there are some times where I'll look at something and be like oh, I'm so motivated to work and there will be sometimes I'll look at the same thing and go I'm not motivated to work I'm just kind of bummed out that I'm looking at this thing that's already done and now I have to you know go through there and um, go through all that work so really the discipline to sit down is probably your best bet uh, so now we got this we can hit A to make that a, a adaptive skin or a unified skin, I should say. So we'll hit make unified skin here, and then we'll go ahead and append that unified skin sphere here. We go ahead and delete that Z sphere out of here. And we can merge these down if we want to, or before we merge them down, we can go through here. You know what? I don't know what it is with me and fish. We made a fish last time, uh, and here I am again. Merge these down, dynamesh those together, and now you can go through here with your Damien standard brush. And you can go through and start uh, hold down Alt to build up some ridges here, and you can kind of dig out this mouth here, and maybe here's our eyeball. Uh, if we if you do want to, you can go in here to your um, primitive menu, and then you can just pull these in, and this will kind of keep you. Um, what's the word? Honest. Now, again, if you want to make multiple eyes, just hold down Control, drag out some more eyeballs here. And we'll put these maybe here. Now let's go ahead and split mass points here because if I take these eyeballs and then I want to put eyelids on them, one thing I can do is I can duplicate these eyeballs off. I can go through here and do trim curve and we'll do an upper eyelid. And then I'll alt tap this one and then we'll duplicate this one off again. We'll go back into trim curve and we can go through. Now this uh, lower lids you're probably going to want to do like maybe here. Trim curve and now we can just kind of inflate these up a bit. And we'll grab this one, and we'll inflate this up a bit. And now these eyeballs I'm going to leave alone. They're, these are going to be in their own subtool here. Actually, let's go ahead and split this one out. Split hidden. So this eyeball, I'll tap that one. This eyeball, tap that one. I'll merge both these eyeballs down. And then these ones here, I will go ahead and merge with the eyelids here. So I'll merge this one down. And I'll merge this one down. And then as I dynamesh these together, Let's crank up our resolution just a tiny bit here. So Dynamesh this. Oops. And when we did our trim um, on the one side, we have to go ahead and just do a quick mirror, mirror, and weld. There we go. So now I've got eyelids on our little weird fish creature. Um, occasionally when ZBrush will do this, it'll go ahead and save. So we didn't really lose anything. Uh, sometimes it'll get in a bad state. Um, that's not a big deal. So I'll show you guys how to recoup that. Uh, slice curve brush question is a way to adjust the angle increments from the default five degrees to less. Uh, let me see if I can do that. So here's the recovered Z tool we're working on. If we want to bring up the whole project, here's the Z project. If you had stuff sitting out here you were working on, um, you can just pull that back in and then we're back to where we started, I think. Let me see. Tool, Z sphere, do I have what I was working on? Ooh, maybe not. So let's go ahead and grab that. Here's our recovered Z tool we were working on. There we go. So we got to get this guy back. And uh, I'm back where we started here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another fish. I know. Uh, I don't know why I always default to fish. I wonder. I mean, I, you know what? Let's, uh, let's have a little bit of fun. So one thing we can do. Let's go to subtool, append, Z sphere. So I'm going to take the Z sphere here and we're going to uh, make some legs. So I'm going to go through here and just so we're not doing another fish and we can go and start dragging this out and as we're drawing here we're in draw mode on the z sphere so we can go ahead and pull this through and that'll go ahead and pull out i'm going to hit x to go across x symmetry here and then i'm going to go back into draw mode so we can do that we can hit w to go into move mode and that'll go ahead and pull out some legs here so if i grab this one here uh, let's pull this back and then i'm going to do if you hold down shift that'll snap it to the previously um, made uh, size. So if you hold down, hit Q to go into draw mode and then hold down shift again, it'll go through here and then we'll hit W and push these things back. So we'll go ahead and kind of pull these legs here and then pull this out. Now, of course, you don't need to make them the same size. You can go in here and scale these things down. Um, you can also, let's put in, yeah, a little buffer in here. And then we'll go in here with Q and we'll drag out one, two, three toes and then again 
drag out, hold down shift, we'll snap these to the same size. I'm going to make my draw size really small. I'm just tapping S to get to my draw size here. Now you can kind of move these out with the move brush here. And if you want to put in knuckles really quickly, uh, let's go ahead and flatten these out so they're on kind of a flat surface here. There you go. You'll put in some knuckles here. You can hit Q and then just go through here and draw in some knuckles and then you can kind of pull these things up just a tiny bit. Uh, so now that you got those, what we can do is let's go ahead and do another little bit here. And you know what? Those don't even have to be eyes. Look at these like little froggy breathy holes. Uh, so we go to transform here. I'm going to hit Q. We're going to go into draw mode. Now when I'm drawing, it's going to snap to the underlying surface here. So I'm going to go to the front, make a um, Z sphere here. And I'm going to pull that Z sphere back just a little bit. And then go back into draw mode and drag out where I want my arms to go. And we'll put those like right here. And then we can hit E. We'll go ahead and scale those up a bit. And then Q. And then Q. We'll put in a little elbow here. W. Q. And we can go ahead. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. And you'd probably want to make those the same size-ish. And I'll have to go back in here and like scale this thing up to kind of match, or maybe scale this one down actually. Kind of match those ones, and then we'll put in some knuckles here. Now, if I want to, I can rotate down the chain. So if I if I rotate an individual Z sphere, it'll just rotate on the Z sphere. If I rotate the bone, that'll rotate down the chain. So I can go through here and kind of rotate these things up. There we go. And now I've got little frog buddy. And now we can hit W and we kind of move these things down just a bit. Again, down the chain. Like so. And then we'll hit W. Okay, so uh, one thing, if you hit A, what that's going to do is give you an adaptive looking skin, but it's actually dynamesh here. So if we go down to adaptive skin, you're going to see we have our dynamesh resolutions at 256. Uh, if you change that down to zero, density of one, now it's going to give you a preview of just the geometry. Now, the reason I like to do this is so I can keep these type transitions in here uh, separate. Um, because at this point, I'm probably going to zero mesh this thing. Because what happens is when you put in a leg here that's like really compact uh, and you dynamesh it together, it's going to stick it together. So if you want to go back and remesh this, it's going to be a pain. And it also could cause some of this webbing in here. So if you change this uh, dynamesh down to like 1 or 64 and then do that, uh, the lower that goes, you're going to see these things starting to web together. So what I'm going to do is make this an actual dynamesh skin here. I'm going to say make adaptive skin. We're going to append, and that just throws your skin out here. Append that skin Z sphere. Let's go ahead and delete that Z sphere. We don't need it anymore. So we've got our skin Z sphere here. Uh, if we go into solo mode here, we don't need these interior body parts, really. We just need uh, where these things connect in. So I can go ahead and separate out some of this stuff. So we're going to go to select lasso. I'm going to hit here and here. And let's just do a quick uh, auto groups, and then I'll do a quick mirror and weld. And now we can take this leg and this arm. And then delete hidden, close holes, mirror and weld, and now we've got arms and legs. If I want to, I can take this little piece of the leg, control shift A, grow all, split hidden, and now those are separate subtools. Now, because I'm not going to be changing, if you know, if I'm going to be doing stuff like this a lot, just like really changing that silhouette, then I would use DynaMesh. If I'm not going to, I'm just going to re be refining this mesh. What I'll just do is go into my zero mesh menu. If I want to keep these ends um separate in fact let's go ahead and hit w and then control tap this one we're gonna hold down control and bring in a little extra edge ring there a little breathing room um if you want to keep those you can go over here to geometry and when you go to z remesher you can say keep groups i don't going to bother i uh, will just do same adapt to size down to zero get nice even quads there we go. So now we've got uh, a nice mesh that we can start sculpting on here. Um, if it's, you know what, let's do double. Looks like it's getting a little bit fishy up here in the toes area. You can also use uh, paint uh, to kind of dictate where you want higher or lower resolution here. So now that we've got a DynaMesh here, we can just start adding DynaMesh resolution. And I'm also going to go in here. You know what I should have done? So if you're watching this, go back to where you had your Z-spheres and give yourself a little breathing room in here. That will allow you to kind of manually bend the legs later 
um, so you don't get that webbing. That's what I was trying to say earlier. So if we go back to uh, Z-Sphere here, we're making a leg. So instead of doing a frog leg like this, do a frog leg like this first, and then go in here with your adaptive skin and say make adaptive skin and now if you want to you can hit W control tap this one and then later you can bend it back and now even though it's bent really close together if when you go to Z remesh it it'll keep that uh, you know that geometry still in there and that's actually let's turn that adaptive size down there we go. So now you can still go in there and there's still a crease in there. So this is much better for being able to go in there and sculpt and even animate this thing later and pose it later. So you can hold down, uh, hold down control while you drag and then you can just go through here and just drag along um, that normal. You know what? I like to use transpose a little bit better. So you can hit Y to go into the transpose mode and you just kind of drag along um, that surface there to kind of mask it out. Uh, so that's what I was saying earlier. But anyways, it's not a huge deal. We're not, I mean, it's, you know, if we're just kind of having fun here, we can go into initialize, preferences, edit, line through to surface. We can go through here and start inflating this stuff up, moving this in, smoothing this out. And now it's just a matter of going in here with our clay brush and kind of just start refining, you know, where you want the muscles to be and where you want these legs to be and a little frog butt. Like so. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes, and then, you know, when you're sculpting on something and you're, you know, it's, what's good is that if you do sculpt something that you really hate uh, later, if you sculpt something and it's like, oh, it's pretty good, and then you look at it, uh, you know, a couple months later and you're like, oh, man, that just means you're learning a lot and you're growing, uh, which is a good thing. If you sculpt something, you make something, and then you look at it a couple years later and you're like, man, I, I still haven't, I, I peaked. I can't do any better than that. Then you're probably plateaued and you probably, you know, need to continue uh, to push yourself. I would imagine, unless you're just an amazing ZBrush master, in which case, yeah, you're not going to get any better. Uh, but I haven't met that person yet. Go ahead and clean this up a little bit here. And yeah, maybe a little... Anyways, I was uh, I was talking about something. Oh yeah, so Control Shift, um, clip curve. It snaps to five degree increments. If I had to guess, I would say maybe under preferences. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and there's always really cool stuff in here, like even this Dynamesh close holes. There's a couple different options for it to fill. Large trice projection, small trice, small trice projection, mesh close holes. Ah, we gotta play with some of the stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know if they have an option for. Oh, yeah, yeah what you can do. <laughs> Duh. Okay, so see how it's. If you hold down shift, it's snapping. If you want it smaller than five, you can do it every one degree just by letting go of shift. Now, if you wanted to do like every two, I don't know how to do that, but just let go of shift. So when you hold down control shift, um, it'll snap. But if you just let go of shift, and you can let go of control and shift. I don't have my other hand on the keyboard. Uh, you can just snap every one. I don't know what this little tumor on his back is supposed to be. What it can be is a baby frog. So if we go in here to the clay brush here, or actually let's go to standard brush, and we'll crank up that Z intensity. I'll turn off. I'll tap L to go out of lazy radius mode. And now we go to the smooth stronger here. There we go. You can put in little hands here. And then uh, one of the, there's one cool brush here. If you hit the comma key, go to brush. It gets under miscellaneous. Misc. There's a spherical. So you can grab a, the spherical brush and you can just kind of pull out. Instead of like inserting a brush, you can just pull out kind of a rounded shape here. Kind of just push in where you want your eyes to go. And then we'll just throw a couple eyes in there. And then 
hit Y to go back into gizmo mode here. And then we'll go back in here with our clay brush and we can kind of start building this up. So now, of course, you can do the whole eyelid trick that we did before, or you can just go in here and just start kind of playing around with some of the stuff. So while the mouth goes in here, we'll put in some cheeks. Maybe a little bit of a chin here. Although really, you can just start, you know, you can make this little fat, fat goopy guy. So we can kind of start just digging those in and then clay brushing those out. And do we have Dynamesh turned on? Let's see, Dynamesh, there we go. And then as we start kind of just putting in this mouth here, we can go this way. Put in a little nose. This will be a whole different creature here. And this is where the like, mouth kind of curves around. And then again, just go back in with your clay brush. Or your inflate brush too is another good one. You can go through here and just like softly inflate these things up a little bit. And then if you want to, go in here with a sphere. Yeah, let's go ahead and reset that. So we can kind of, we'll do a split mass points. Put that in there. And we'll just kind of move that around a little bit. Hit D. That'll give us a dynamic subdivision. And we'll go back here. Whatever that thing is, looks like a little seal. Uh, yeah, exactly. How do you set the origin point? or anchor, whatever it is called in ZBrush, sometimes symmetry goes way off the model. Um, so, if you have something, I'm trying to think of a good example here. If you have, uh, you know what, let's do tool. I'm not quite sure what you mean, but on the as far as the symmetry goes, um, if you have a model like this and you have symmetry turned on and you hit W and you say, let me go to unmatch mass center, it's going to go to the local center of this thing. So you want to hit X, go to unmatch mass center, hit W, and now you're in the mesh center. And then you can, of course, turn X back on. Um, however, the reason it has that is so you can go out here to like your these um, little wrist guards or bracelets, whatever these things are. If you alt tap, there we go. If you all tap those and hit W and you hold down Alt and go to Unmatched Mesh Center with X turned on, what that's going to do is put it to this Unmatched Mesh Center. So now if you start, if you want to say scale both of these up, um, what's going to happen is if you go out here and it's like, whoa, I just want to like scale up his arm. Why is it going away and towards the local center? Go up here to local sim. That's going to be your local symmetry. And that's just going to be localized for the object here. So if you want to scale these things out on their local symmetrical axis, that's how you do that. If you have that off, it's going to go towards uh, center and away from the world axis. So LSIM is your friend. Now where, where LSIM can sometimes not be your friend is let's say <laughs> a little Cindy Lopper Madonna look there. So if we go, uh, we hit X and we say, get rid of this one. And we say, okay, I, I've been dealing with this one over here. Uh, we got some nice arm warmers here. So we're gonna start doing some 80s aerobics. We're feeling good from our head to our feet and put this in here. So if we want this one here, it's like, okay, I just want to mirror this over to the other side here. And you go over here and mirror and weld. It's going to mirror and weld across its local axis because we have LSIM turned on. So turn that off, do a quick mirror and weld. And then if you want to hit X to go across X symmetry, you can start moving this across X symmetry. But if you want to scale it on its local axis, just make sure you turn LSIM back on. And there you go. It's ready for some aerobics. Um, can Z-Spheres export as bones for animating or posing tool and other software? Yes, actually, kind of. Crap, let me see if I can find them. Tony Reynolds YouTube. Oh boy. Let's say Tony Reynolds ZBrush. Uh, 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 oh man, I'm 
me see. Uh, give me a second, because this is exactly what you're asking. He wrote a thing to go from ZBrush to Maya uh, and convert the bones or convert the Z spheres to bones and then back again. Um, Tony Reynolds, guy I used to work with, used to be my boss um, at Sony and Sword Affinity. And now I can't find his YouTube channel. Uh, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. This will be exactly what you're looking for. Let's see. There we go. There we go. So I found that. Let me scroll through his. There we go. Uh, Maya Joints Disease Fears Tool Demonstration. Artstation.com. Okay. Okay, so it's on his Artstation page. So I'm going to link you. Uh, if you want to, you can go to Tony Reynolds on Artstation. And he's, you know, he's awesome, amazing sculptor in here, obviously. Uh, but what you're looking for is this post right here, Maya Joints to Z Sphere Tool. And I'll just link you guys straight to that. That'll convert your joints to Z Spheres and I think back again as well, I think. But check that out. That might be useful to you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that thing was or why. I guess we need to add a tail in there. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah. I wasn't trying to make anything in particular, but you can see how easy it is just to kind of riff and just have a little bit of fun and just figure out, you know, what you want your stuff to look like and go in here with H Polish. We can be like, okay, let's polish this down and then we'll trim it out. And again, you can use hard surface brushes just to kind of build up your forms. If you're doing like uh, faces and stuff, these are great to find uh, the planes of the face, like the cheekbones and stuff. It's really good for that. And then you can go through here and just soften it out just a little bit, these transitions. Go back in with your move brush like so. And now you can go through here and be like, okay, let's uh, on the side here, we'll kind of build up a little bit of skin transition here. You can go in here with your uh, Damien Standard brush. And we go in here with our clay brush and kind of smooth that out. Build this up. Now, of course, if I'm going to be 3D printing this, it's fine because this is all like one solid mesh and all that good stuff as far as the main part here. But if I'm gonna be like working on this, I would definitely split this thing off and work on it separately so that I have like two unique objects or not kind of stuck together. Because if I wanted to ch make any changes, I'm gonna be pulling both of these things around and that's not uh, great. Cool. Um, and you can set your pivot if you do go off, off axis. Um, you know, if this thing is up, whoops, turn off X here. This thing is up here. Uh, you can, if you have LSIM turned on and it's, let's turn off perspective here. You know, it'll be local symmetry across the local axis. So I have this off, um, you know, it's going to assume that your other piece of mesh is over here on the world axis. So you can turn LSIM off, even if it's not um, locally symmetrical. There's also another way, I don't use it very often. I think Joseph Druss went over it in like the SZ brush where it's like, oh, I don't remember where it is. Draw. I don't remember. There's another way to like to temporarily reset where the pivots are. Uh, you know where it used to be? It's probably under transform. That makes more sense. Uh, go over here. You're going to see point selection mode. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go, uh, set pivot point, and then clear pivot point. So you can set your pivot point based on where your object is in space, and then you can sculpt. Um, I prefer just to turn on LSIM. That's your local symmetry wherever the object is in space, but you can use set pivot and clear pivot here. Uh, anything in ZBrush, you can hover over it. It'll tell you what it is, and even in a hotkey that's assigned, like polyframe here is shift F, uh, but you know this one doesn't have a hotkey. You can hold down control, and then it'll, and if you pull that control over a ZBrush interface item, usually it'll give you a lot more uh, information. So in this case, it enables you to define center points for rotating, deforming, symmetrical editing, and other actions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So give that a shot, maybe. Cool. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll, we'll make a little three D print and Joseph just put it in the backyard. There we go. Um, okay, so we were 
doing a little bit of work. How are we doing on time? Okay, we got a little bit of time left. Uh, okay, we did have two things here. So you know what? We'll save this as where am I streaming here? Whoops. I'm just going to fill this folder up. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's give ZBrush a little breather here. Go ahead and shut her down and load her back up. And I do have that orc I was looking at earlier. And uh, these are just, uh, you know, occasionally I'll get stuff sent to me. Uh, I can't promise that I'll be able to go over everything, but I told these people like a long time ago that I would check out their stuff. Um, and it's easier for me to kind of just go over it in real time in 3D than it is for me to like do a pan over anything. And not that I needed to do any of this, like the helmet that I brought in earlier wasn't mine, that was Cameron Smith's. Um, this orc isn't mine. Um, this is Nikolai, I think. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Nikolik. Um, and it's awesome. Like I, I got, I really got nothing for you on this orc. It's, it's really cool. Um, I love all of this detail you put in here. And then this is the detail I was talking about earlier where um, you can go through here and use a curve brush to put in these details. I usually tend to wait for the texture to put those in, but if you're just doing like a straight up ZBrush sculpt, um, that's how you do it. So this thing's looking great. I love it. I got nothing for you. Um, some of the stuff I might, preferences, edit, line cursor to surface. And again, it's more of a stylistic thing, really. Um, you know, this here, this is how things are bent out. So, you know, you would talk to your rigging department to determine like how your APOs, how they're gonna wanna put the bones in your APOs there. So that's not really a, a judgment call for me to make. Uh, but what I can do is I'm gonna subtool, uh, duplicate this off. And also, you know, he's got that Mr. Incredible look. So he's got the little legs, um, little Hank Hill butt, and then the huge massive upper body. And again, that's just stylistic choices there. Um, what I might consider and I'm going to hold down shift, pop this to the top. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this off, pop this to the top. I'm going to merge these two down. And let's go ahead and go into solo mode here. I'll do a quick mirror and weld. And I can quickly just do a dynamesh this. Excuse me. Okay. So now, um, you know, any changes. So this, this area right through here, I use, I tend to like, if I'm going to do a very top heavy character, uh, I will kind of recess their neck in there quite a bit. Uh, when you get into animation though, sometimes what they'll come back with is, um, you know, he needs to be a little bit more expressive. So you can kind of fudge this a little bit here. So I'm going to take this move and I'm just going to kind of give him just a little bit more breathing room. Uh, it doesn't really ruin anything. You can still go in here and kind of clean this up a bit um, or, you know, bulk this out a bit around as where his trapezius is. And you can kind of even pull this down into like a little waddle he's got going there. Um, I would also maybe go in here and we can kind of just give a little bit more form up through here. Now, again, stylistically, you know, depending on, you know, the type of muscles you're trying to make, you can, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you how to do your muscles for sure. Uh, but one thing you can do is you can kind of pop some of these forms here. Uh, this form here is more of like a platysma form here. If your sternal mastoid is going to be coming down through this direction here and into your thing. So yeah, this, this kind of shape here is going to be more of like skin and you can even do, um, hold on shift. Let's go into lazy raise, crank that up, turn off L, crank that intensity up. So now we can go through here and you can even do start indicating different, uh, texture properties here. So, you know, there's different skin types wherever it is on your face. So skin on the jaw, is going to be a little different than the skin on your nose, which is going to be a little different than the skin um, on your elbows and all that good stuff here. So what we can do is we can kind of start indicating that by going through here. We can add a little bit of like, and again, this is just, in, I'm, I, I took this back down from a refined stage to more of a um, poly, poly group or a concepty stage here. So we can kind of start digging in and kind of determining like maybe there's something weird going on back here. And then of course we kind of did beef up his sternal mastoid, sternal clio, clio mastoid, uh, back through here. It's going to go behind your ear. Let's go to smooth stronger here. And then you can kind of just pass that through here. Um, another thing I might consider 
is, you know, when you're supinated, your palms are out, you are going to get this curves. As you start bending your hands over, that's actually going to straighten your arm out. So in this case here, I'm going to straighten this out just a tiny bit. That's going to give it a little bit more of a natural uh, look, at least in that pose here. Now, again, these might be stylistic choices, so I'm not going to tell you how to do your muscles. Um, but what you can do is you can still keep the stylized muscles and the stylized proportions, but I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit uh, flatter through here. So when you bend your arm up, it'll peak. And then if you're, I, I act like I'm actually on camera here. Um, whoop. Okay, so um, when our arm is bent, so here's, you see me, you see me? Here's uh, supinated, your palms out. Uh, as you go pronated, palms down, your arm's actually gonna flatten out uh, as you get in that A-frame pose. Now, when it comes to that bicep, he's got it forward here. When it was kind of rounded out, so that was more like his arm was flexed. Now you're gonna see as I push my arm, uh, you know, pronated, it's going to pull that bicep out, down. It's gonna flatten it out. As I turn my arm forward, it's going to peak here. So depending on how the arm is posed is going to kind of determine this. So what I basically did was just kind of flatten this out. It doesn't need to, you know, if you put in an unnatural peak here, it's going to look like he's bending it and also pulling his knuckles towards his face here. Um, so we can kind of just flatten that a little bit. And then underneath here, so we've got our deltoid. It's going to be kind of pulling across here. And you are going to have that perfect little um, sinus in there for your, your um, muscles are going to go through here. Your pectoralis major. And then you've got your clavicle here. I'm going to kind of exaggerate this just a tiny bit here for effect. And then, yeah, you've got it right. So you're just going to kind of pull this in, and your deltoid's going to go across, and it's going to connect right through here. And then your pectoralis major is going to go and tuck up right into your armpit. So it's actually going to be back a little bit further there. There we go. And that's going to attach your humerus. So we've got our bicep here and our heads of our bicep and underneath here you're going to have your coracio-brachialis. That's going to be your little armpit muscle here that's coming right off the back of your chromium, pro uh, not the chromium process, the coracoid process underneath your scapula there. And then back here your deltoid is going to be, uh, you're going to have a spine of the scapula. So here's where the uh, clavicle comes back. Uh, it's going to end at this chromium process and then you have a spine of the scapula is going to come through here and then your traps are going to attach to that. And then you have your teres major, teres minor, and for spinatus all through here and then your lats are actually going to cover that up. Now that doesn't mean you necessarily have to have your laps, lats overlapping that but it is going to give it more of this type of look here. And then as your scapula kind of pokes out down here it's going to get a little bit dug in and rounded out towards here. So just because your lats are going over, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the bottom of the scapula. It just means that it's going to bulge out the bottom of the latissimus dorsi, which is going to cover up that bottom part of that lat there. Um, and then again, your traps are going to be going right into that spine of the scapula here. And you can kind of just maintain that direction of the muscle fiber as well, which it looks like you have going on here. So, and actually on this um, deltoid here, those muscle fibers are actually going to kind of pull towards the towards the front here. So if you wanted to kind of exaggerate that, um, these tend to pull forward onto the humerus, like so. And then on the arm here, you've got your brachialis. So you've got your biceps here, and that's going to tuck right down here into the arm here. Uh, you got your brachialis. Now, this brachialis is going to go all the way through your arm, and it's actually going to show up back up again down here. Not not to be confused with your coracial brachialis. That's going to be another muscle. So that's going to kind of do this. And then here's your brachialis coming back through on the underside of the arm here. And then on this inside here, I forget what this muscle's called, but it's going to have another muscle coming through here. Now, you've got your flexors here. So as your um, bringing, as you're making a fist, you're going to get those Popeye muscles right here on your forearm. Those are going to bulge. As, you're, as you kind of <laughs> pull your fingers back, that's going to grab these muscles back here. You're going to see those. And if you kind of wiggle your fingers, you're going to see those things start to activate here. So, and you also have, uh, I tend to make this all one muscle. It's actually two muscles here, but you're going to have your uh, brachioradialis goes through here 
and then you're going to have your flexors right along the back that go down in your hand and then you're going to have your ulna which is going to create this. So I'm going to kind of flatten this out just a bit here. So this is going to be our, our of course, our triceps muscle back here. I'm going to kind of just and again, we're keeping it stylized. I mean, his proportions are still pretty crazy. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just getting the forms a little bit tighter uh, before we, you know, do it super stylized here. Um, so again, we can go through here. We can go into our standard brush. And this is all going to be like a ligament. It's going to be flat. So a lot of the body is going to be like bulge of the muscle, flat of the ligament, sharp corner of the bone here. And the tricep is a perfect example of that. Um, it's going to be a little bit higher here. You're also going to have a nice balance of the arm here. So it's going to be deltoid, higher, lower, higher, lower, uh, even on the thighs here, higher, lower, higher, lower. And then the ankles are going to switch higher, lower. Uh, and this is going to give that nice kind of pattern, repetitive pattern through here. Speaking of thighs, you do have these thighs perfect. I love them. Um, and they're going to be a little bit more rounded out. There's going to be more um, kind of things pulling through on this side. This side is going to be a little flatter. So I'm going to exaggerate this kind of inside curve, and then this outside flatness here. And there's a really nice contrast. Uh, and then you've got your tibialis, your tibia, and then your tibialis anterior is going to kind of pull across here, I think. I'm a little bit rusty. So that's going to kind of bulge out a little bit here. Uh, but this nice flat plane in here, again, you can use your H polish brush if you really want to exaggerate where that bone is just sitting right underneath. And it's it actually has little ligaments over it too, or um, like sheaths of stuff over it. So it's not going to be perfectly flat, but if you want to exaggerate that flatness, you can go in there with your H polish brush. Um, this can sometimes be go a little bit flatter into the knee here. And again, stylistic choices, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you are going to have your patella, which is going to um, favor your femur. So it's going to stay up the top. And then underneath here, this is where you're going to get the tibia is going to have a little bump here. And again, this is a little bit much maybe, but uh, you're going to have a tibia here. Then you're also going to have little fat deposits underneath your leg here. So it's going to kind of, on females, it's going to really give them like a little cupid face right in there. Uh, males, not so much, but it is going to have a little bit of um, just form down in here. Maybe not that much. Okay, so uh, back up to the arm here. So we got our brachioradialis. And this is a good one too. So as you're going from pronation to supination, you're good. This is going to drag. It's, you're basically crossing your radius over your ulna. So your radius is always attached to your thumb. Your ulna is always attached to your pinky. And at this point, you're crossing that radius over and it's pulling that brachioradialis, brachy, um, you know, towards your thumb here. So we can kind of pull this through like so. And that's going to give us that nice, nice pull across here. Um, and this is actually probably not going to be a little bit, a little bit flatter here. And this is going to bulge again, bulge and then flat. And then this one's going to be a little bit of a smoother curve, I believe. Uh, now this one here, we were kind of working on the triceps. So it's going to get that bulge, that triceps bulge. And this is going to, uh, it's got two heads coming up here. One of them's going to go up and in here. One of them's going to actually cut across and you're going to have like one of your, I think it's your. Uh, Terry's minor like goes over it maybe and that'll kind of bulge out. I don't know. I, again, I'm rusty. I need to go back and relook at some of the stuff here, but something like that. And your triceps going to go in here and then your standard brush. Use that to kind of carve out and we're going to flatten this area back out here. So we're going to get that nice bulge and then the flatten and then the corner of where that um, ulna ends up popping out here. So uh, we got that going, uh, the lats and the traps. Now the tra uh, traps here are really going to go to the bottom of the spine here. So that's actually going to overlap here. I'm going to pull this up. And uh, you got this too. You got your C7 right in here. So your traps are going to go up to your occipital protuberance right back of the skull here. And that's going to kind of fan out and then fan back in. And then you're going to have your C7 is going to kind of bulge out a little bit there, like so. And then it's going to tuck right back in here. And again, you can, you know, feel free to get your muscle striations back in there and just kind of strike them at whatever direction you wanted that to go. And you got that nice deep divot where your spine's going to go. And you're going to have some erector spinalis or whatever that's called. It's going to put uh, these cords along your back. Up here, they're going to be covered up, but down here, you're going to see them a little bit better. And that's going to go into your little sacrum here and his little butt. 
And then we got the obliques here. And for these, the pectoralis, I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this out just a bit. And then we're going to kind of curve that up. And then uh, a lot of times I see, uh, not so much in this case, and in fact, not at all. You, great job. But what I'll sometimes see is that these pecs sometimes start to get Arnold pecs, which is uh, not a bad thing if you're trying to sculpt Arnold Schwarzenegger. But if you're trying to sculpt a, uh, a normal human being or somebody who's not a bodybuilder, which in this case, this guy's pretty bodybuildery. I'm also going to flatten this deltoid out just a tiny bit here. Um, you know, stylistically speaking, you may want to have uh, big bulging, uh, rounded bowling ball shoulders, but in this case, I'm just I'm making it a little bit more natural. Um, but these pecs are actually pretty flat. Now, for bodybuilders, they're not going to be, uh, but even for like Arnold, Arnold pecs, they are going to kind of flatten out up here and then bulge towards the bottom here. So I'm going to kind of just dial that in just a tiny bit here. And that's going to give it, again, just a little bit more of a natural look. And we'll kind of just put those muscle striations back in. And then if you're doing a lot of chest workouts in here, you can kind of just go through here. And again, we're just using the Damien standard of the standard brush. And we can go back in here with our clay brush. And now the chest muscles kind of, you can see it attaching and kind of flattening out and then bulging towards the bottom. And then we can just put in the nipples off to the sides. Uh, you're going to want to put the nipples out this way, if you put them too close in, it's going to look like he's hunching forward and kind of not heroic. So you're going to put those over here. Just kind of keep those out. Now, as we follow this curve back, you're going to start seeing the serratus anterior. Now, if this guy's super ripped, uh, you are going to have your serratus anterior, which is where that's going to be sitting right on top of your rib cage here. And it's actually going to go underneath your lats, your latissimus dorsi here. And the other cool thing is your scapula floats right on top of that serratus anterior underneath uh, your latissimus dorsi. So or your lats, let's call it lats. Uh, so that's going to kind of pull through here. You're going to see that lat separation going over. And then about, yeah, about let's say, let's say there. And kind of pull this in and then that's going to yeah, connect right down in there. Uh, your obliques are where these are coming in from. Now, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of ribs on this guy. He seems pretty muscular, but you are going to see, um, you know, these eight pack abs here. So there's the, the rib cage. You can set it the, the indication of the rib cage. And then the serratus anterior is going to be kind of bulgy. Like through here, if you hold on shift and smooth, um, these are going to kind of bulge out and then your Obliques are going to be flatter, and they're going to just kind of um, just like little fingers going up into the serratus anterior. And that's going to kind of wrap around the body here. And this is where you're going to kind of twist your body. And then it's going to bulge on the male more so than the female usually. And again, we're talking just idealized here, but we can go through here. We can hold on standard brush. And, you know, your iliac crest here, your anterior superior iliac spine or whatever that is. Uh, it's going to cut through here. You're going to see that. It's going to be a good landmark. And then also back here, uh, you're going to see that kind of come through. And then your obliques are just going to sit right on top of that iliac crest. So even on guys who have put on a little bit of weight, you're just going to get, you're going to develop fat above that iliac crest here. And then um, that'll kind of come through here. And then these muscles here, um, usually it'll kind of, your, your abs will kind of follow this pattern. So it'll kind of go down and then it'll even out around here. So you can kind of just uh, exaggerate that maybe just a little bit. And then your obliques are kind of just tucking right in here. Perfect. And again, I'm just making very <coughs> minor changes. I'm not, I'm not even saying you would need to do this necessarily to depending on the look you're going for. Uh, I'm just making some just minor adjustments here as we kind of work through here. And then, of course, you know, once you get these things dialed in, let's go ahead and pull this down a little bit here. And you're starting to refine. This is where you can kind of go in and start adding the veins, where the veins are going to go, and get some good vein reference. Because the veins are there for a reason. So I'm just kind of putting them in willy-nilly now. Um, but you can kind of just dial in where you'd want those to go. You can also do cool stuff. Like sometimes you'll see bodybuilders with these big, uh, I put this on the commander. These, um, like your veins will kind of just spring in you get really vascular uh, but then sometimes they'll just kind of do that kind of thing where they just kind of lose their elasticity and spring back um, I don't know if that's your thing but you can certainly have that in if you want to knock these back let's go to our smooth brush here let's kind of knock those back just a little bit uh, you got their legs here um, that was a little butt and yeah the lats here again you're not going to see a whole lot of those ribs through there 
So I'm going to kind of dial that back just a little bit because these are pretty, he's got some pretty thick muscles through here. That's another bodybuilder thing. You know, your serratus anterior is probably going to be closer to the where the rib cage is. And then it's what's going to flare out is going to be these lats in the back. So you look up Franco Colombo, um, Arnold's lifting partner, you're going to see some monster lat spreads there. Um, and that's where this kind of seeing lats from the front. Joe Average isn't going to have serratus anterior and lats on the front unless you're uh, very, very low body fat. You're not going to see a whole lot of these. Um, and also a lat spread from the front is something you need to work really hard to get. Um, so again, Joe Average isn't going to have that. But this is not definitely not Joe Average here. Um, but yeah, how are you doing on time? I have about 15 minutes. And let's go through here and kind of dig this in here. And also some of this stuff you can exaggerate too. Um, if you look up Andy Bergholtz, and look up Andy Bergholtz Hulk hands. Um, he has an amazing pair. He did an incredible uh, Hulk statue. And he uh, has a really nice pair of hands that are like kind of like stylized Hulk hands. They're big square uh, knuckles and it just it just looks great. Go look him up. He's really good. Uh, whenever I'm looking for creature reference or uh, stuff like that, um, it's usually the traditional guys I'll go and look up for whatever reason. And it's the Andy Bergholtz, Jordu Shell, um, Bolaris, you know, those kind of guys that, I don't know, they're just really appealing to me. And then you can kind of go through here. And it's, so it looks like you kind of did exaggerate, you know, these uh, hands here. And then also... These, these guys are usually going to have, you know, you can actually take, if you take your arm and you just kind of shake it towards the ground and then you look at your veins, you'll get a little bit better of a vein pattern here. So you can kind of start seeing, you know, how these things interact with each other here. And also towards the back of the hand here, there's going to be sometimes, you know, depending on how the hand is posed, um, more or less kind of wrinkles through here. You're going to get big wrinkles in these knuckles here. And this is where I might get into like, you know what, I want to keep the body at that resolution, but I'm just going to take these hands, split them off, and I'm going to raise the Dynamesh resolution on the hands only. And then I can work on the body at a separate resolution. Oops, here's the original one here. Oh, and you got the, you got the nails out here. That's good. Uh, but I can work at the body at a different resolution from my hands here. And I can also do that with the head if I want to go through here and like say take this head off go ahead and split hidden and then we can just raise the resolution on this head and now we can go through here and then on the head what I would do let's go ahead and smooth this out um, you know I kind of you know dynameshed a little bit too low here that's not a big deal we can just go through here and we'll inflate that um, for the head what I might do is go in here with the Damien standard and we'll just kind of delineate around the nostril here and then the labial fold is going to cut through here. Now you're not, you are going to have lips <coughs> on this orc. So I'm going to do just a little bit more to kind of show that there are, you know, lips here. And then these lips are going to curl in. And then now the lower lip, he's going to have an underbite. Uh, normally you're not going to see a whole lot of underbites. This is certainly not this exaggerated here, uh, but they do exist. And that's where you're going to have to dial in kind of how those teeth are going to work. And also, you know, you've got these huge, massive, um, you can just kind of put a little line maybe where this kind of lower lip can kind of curl out. Because you still want to maintain the form of where these things end up. And then, you know, the teeth under here are kind of just forcing the skin out. So maybe you can kind of exaggerate that a little bit. And then, yeah, underneath that lower lip, you're going to have this where it goes into the chin here. And then here, you're going to kind of build this up just a bit. And we want to maintain good draft here, but you also, you know, and, you ha and everything's here. I'm not saying, again, keep reiterating this. I'm not telling you what to do. Your sculpt is fine as it is. I'm just making some minor modifications as I see them the places where I might exaggerate or, uh, you know, flatten out. So we can go in here. And again, you can use H polis to kind of get the forms of the face here. And we can go through here and kind of dig this out. And I can exaggerate like, 
the eye bags here. So you can give it like a, you know, eye bags are going to go through here. Then the eyelids are going to kind of come down. Then your subcutaneous, your little orbit is going to kind of pull down through here. And then your eyebrows kind of pull back through here. So now here, let's go ahead and raise that resolution just a little bit more. So again, if I was to dynamesh my resolution at this high on the body, it would be just too many millions of polygons. It'd be a pain to move around. But on the head, uh, I'm not saying you should work at different resolutions and resin your head higher or faster than you do your body, but sometimes it is useful to just kind of go in and dial in your head as a different resolution as you start working. And this ana this facial anatomy is pretty out there as far as like how this guy's going to work with that just massive underbite here. I think he did a great job through here. Uh, we kind of take this ear through here and kind of add, you know, this ear, ears too. So this is still going to be human anatomy here. So we're going to take this in and we're going to sweep this into the ear here. And then you're going to get this little bump here. And then this little bump here, your tragus and your anti-tragus and your auditory meatus, all that cool stuff. Um, so we're going to maintain a lot of that. And this is going to kind of come out and then back in. So we're going to get that little seashell shape back in there, like so. And then we can go back through here. Uh, your zygomatic arch is going to go back from your cheekbones back to here. And again, this is where proportion is kind of up in the air. It's kind of up to you, like, you know, where you want this to go. I would say, just to kind of make this sit a little bit more natural, I'm going to take this ear, I'm going to blur it a bit, and then I can rotate this. Uh, we're going to rotate this back just a little bit. Because your ears kind of sit back at an angle from the midline. Now, of course, the midline of this head is going to be like, uh, let's say, there-ish. Uh, so that's not, that's about where I would expect it. And then we just go through here and kind of put in this like angry stuff here and then this will kind of come out. Grr. And this is where reference really comes into play. Like even if you just have a mirror next to your table, like a little compact mirror, and you just make these faces, that's going to help so much. I'm not doing it right now. Probably should be, but I don't have a mirror. I wasn't really overly prepared for today, obviously. We can go through here and just kind of dial that in a little bit. Uh, so we've got these shapes here. We've got our little divot among the mouth here. And this is where I probably would have gone in earlier. And, you know, I'm, again, flying by the seat of my pants here, so I would take a little bit more of a measured approach to creating this guy so that I could go through and separate the lips out and all that good stuff. But, oh well. You know, let's kind of put in a little ridge here. And then we can go through here with the clay brush, or even the inflate brush maybe might even be better. Because the inflate brush is uh, set at a lower Z intensity by default, so it's a little bit more of a subtle look there. Dig this in. And this is where if you have any alphas from like texture XYZ, they can come in handy. Um, or you can just do it in the texture later. But um, you can kind of go through here and start adding a little bit of lip texture. Because again, lips are going to be different than noses, which is going to be different than necks, going to be different than all the little different areas of your face that have a little different skin here. We'll go ahead and just... Now, if you really want to make this stylized, you can go through here. And you can start blocking in the planes with your H polish brush and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to go for that much of a stylized look. But we can go in here. Let's inflate this nostril out. And we'll go in with our H polish brush a little bit and just kind of find these forms a little bit better. Let's go ahead and crank that resolution up too. There we go. Let's just kind of delineate where that nostril kind of comes in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so we'll bring everything back. If we take these, so we'll take the hands here. 
in the body. You can see, you know, the fairly minor changes that I made. Let's turn off X symmetry here. We'll just push this out to the side. And then we'll take, um, You can see just you know fairly minor changes that I made, um, but they kind of just you know I'm maintaining the same proportions. I'm maintaining uh, the same stylized stuff, uh, but just kind of going in and cleaning up some of these forms here to give them just a just kind of reel them back in just a little bit um, might help make a little bit of that difference. Um, Uh, let's say just uh, tickle pickle says, <laughs> can you talk about defining the lower body area of women at some point, particularly thighs, calves, and knees? Uh, I can. I'm running out of time right now. If you want, I'm, I have to wrap it up. But if you want to, if you go to Pavlovich workshop here, I go over. I basically sculpt. Let's see if I can find her streaming. Uh, I need to get back to this one. Zbrush female high res tech suit tech suit armor. So we go back to TechSuit 01 here. We do have, I did sculpt this female pretty much just on uh, this channel here. So start to finish, I guess I don't have a more naked version of her, oh, unless it's on the head here. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, but we basically sculpt this female out. So if you go back to um, the Pebbles Workshop I just linked to you. Go all the way to Broadcast 1 and Broadcast 2, I think. Um, I do a little bit of cleanup work there, so that might help you. Uh, any reference material that shows the aging process of the muscles of the human body? Yeah, there's... Um, let me get back to you on that one. I know uh, Hugh Atlas... For, somebody might have mentioned it, actually. I just saw that. Uh, human an Anatomy for Artists. Hold on just a second. This doesn't necessarily touch on exactly that, but uh, this is a good one. I usually keep this one around for all a lot of stuff. Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist. Um, old man sculpting the nude. Yeah, that'll be, and good, really good good reference of just exactly what you're sculpting um, is going to be a big deal. So get a lot of old man reference and really. Uh, go with that. Uh, just take an anatomy class. You know the muscles full names. I, I've taken, I teach anatomy at uh, Gemini School of Visual Arts. I forget the name. Gemini School here in Austin. Um, so I kind of know them. I don't really require my students to know the muscles, the names of the muscles anyways. I don't find that it's that important, but while I'm communicating where the muscles are, it's useful to kind of just call them out by name. Um, but yeah, uh, I took anatomy classes and at Ringling, where I went to college, and also, you know, just teach, teaching myself anatomy over time. Uh, was the gun you made for 4 8 game res, or do you remain as a high poly? I did end up game resing that. Uh, we do, I'm trying to remember, oh, I didn't do it on my channel. Um, there's going to be an article coming out soon, and I'm going to do a video uh, supplement to that article that goes over this, but I can show you the game res version of that um, if we go into handgun here. And uh, so basically, and really all I did, I didn't do anything fancy. I basically decimated it down, auto UV'd it, brought it in and textured it. And I just decimated it to high resolution so that, uh, let's go back to our texture settings here. Go to 2048 here. Let's kind of knock that down just a bit, make it run a little bit faster. So basically it's a fairly high poly weapon, but I'm still able to go in here and do all of my painter tricks um, to get this uh, uh, rendered up. And this is more of just a, visualization previs concepting thing so I could get this in a game very quickly in a matter of minutes as opposed to resurfacing this thing and taking hours to do it uh, well that's going I'm just gonna throw this in the IRA here and this is where it gets into uh, if I want to do a dome render here we'll do not a clear color we'll change this to Bonifacio it's still loading up. 
we still streaming here? Just want to make sure it doesn't shut down. We got about three minutes here. Um, like I said, this was fairly heavy duty, and I did have a 4K version of this, so I think it's dumping the 4K and bringing back in the 2K. Uh, let's wait for that to load. You ever just use decimation and that's it for retopo or decimation master then zero mesher? Uh, for this one right here, what you're looking at right here is just a purely decimated mesh. It is absolutely just triangulated soup. Um, God, maybe we'll go out of here. Come on, load up. I did say 2048, right? Yes. Let's let this finish loading in here. Because what, en what ends up happening is when I save it as a 20, 4096, it'll sometimes bring it in and want to resolve everything at 4096. And then when I go back to 2048, it'll dump it back down and then run a little bit faster. So I'm just going to let this load in. And once it's loaded in, it'll, it'll go pretty quickly here. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So give it some time. Uh, but realistically, this is just for, there it goes, previs stuff here. So now when I go into IRA, this will give me a little bit of a render in here. And let me go ahead and fix this here. Filters, color key. Come on, color key. There we go. A little better. Uh, so now I can go through here and I can do a render. I can hold on shift and kind of rotate this around. Um, let's go into maybe a interior place. Do we have an interior in here? Oh, yeah, it's studio. Ugh. You can drop it into a studio, I suppose. And if you don't want to see the background, but you do want it lighting in your environment, you can go to clear color here. Uh, you can also go down here and you can do like, there's a ton of different stuff in here, but this is just to kind of get a nice uh, quick beauty render. And of course you can just do a render in uh, Painter as well. But if you want to just do, and if you go to my channel here, I'll link you guys, go to my channel, go to my live stream highlights. And I go through this whole process on a couple of robots. Um, but as far as the high-res renders you guys saw, uh, that was probably just high-res out of ZBrush into Keyshot. Um, although, no, if you did see this one, then this is the painter version. This is just decimated down, auto UV'd, and then just painted up like so. And uh, let's go ahead and go to Don. I'm going to go ahead and change this out. Bus Garage, uh, we can bring back in the environment and if you wanted to also you could change the reflectivity of the ground if you want to make it like a mirror surface here and change the glossiness so if you wanted to like reflect your gun in here it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a garage here but if you do go back to a clear color background you can kind of start reflecting that like so anyway that's that um is it okay for games the the article, I'm not sure. I'm, I'll, I'll get back to you guys. It's going to be um, not in the United States. But decimation, is it okay for games? Um, not usually, especially if you're going to be animating it. Now, if it's going to be hard surface like rocks or even this metal stuff, you can get away with it for a time. Uh, but you are going to run into certain normal errors. Uh, you're going to get a little bit more bruising. It's not going to be a very clean mesh. So it's great for just getting stuff in quickly and evaluating it and iterating on it. But when you go to do the final, it's better just to kind of rebuild it, get nice normals, get nice um, vertex normals and nice baked normals. And all that good stuff, which, you know, it's diminishing returns. You know, if I was to go through and make this weapon again, I would spend a couple days making it perfect and baking out perfect maps. And, oh, it's beautiful. And it would look no different than what I have right here. Or it would look a little bit better, like 3% better. So you got to kind of just dictate or judge, you know, if I want to just evaluate this thing, how quickly do I want to get it done and in so I can make good judgments and then iterate through and make a better product before I make the decision to go in and rebuild everything, get it in, and then go, oh, you know what? This is not working. So pick and choose your battles. I'm going to head out. It's going to be around that time. So thanks for showing up, everybody. And also thanks to Cameron Smith and Nicolik uh, for letting me use their stuff. Hopefully that will help you guys out. And again, I can't promise that I'll, I'll be able to do this um, all the time. And it looks like I actually missed one too, another one I could have gone through. Um, but, you know, for what it's worth, uh, let's go ahead and kill that. I uh, hope it was useful, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks a lot. Let me find my OBS so I can get on out of here.